that have a 100% fresh rating on Rotten Tomatoes. I will give each of them a score from 1 to 10, 1 being a, a terrible movie, 10 being a great movie. Once I have watched and scored every movie individually, I will come out with a comprehensive list, which will list them from best to worst. Uh, I am doing this in chronological order. So I started in the 1920s era with the silent pictures, and now I'm working my way to 2022. I am on number 12 of 206. This is Baudu, Saved from Drowning. It came out in 1932. It's directed by Jean Reno, which is a famous director. Uh, it stars Michael Simone, Sim, Simon as Baudot, Marcella Henninen as Emma, Severine Lurkazinska as Chloe, and Charles Grenal as Edward. It has a 100% rating on Rotten Tomatoes, like all these movies will, and it has an 82% critic, or sorry, audience rating, which is a great uh, rating. I would say, though, it's on the sort of the lower range of what we've been looking at. Uh, most of these movies have been anywhere from 80 to 95, uh, so it is on the lower end, but that's still a fantastic audience rate, considering it's 100% from critics. So what is this movie about? This movie starts with Bordeaux in a park. Uh, he is with his dog. His dog gets away from him and he goes searching for his dog. Now, Bordeaux is a tramp, or as we would call a bum. So as he's going around asking people if they've seen his dog, they all kind of run away from him. Um, they try to ignore him. Mothers are they're taking their children. Go away, bum. It's okay, honey. Go away, bum. Like he's some kind of a leopard on Leopard Sea Island. And then uh, he goes to ask a cop. He says, hey, have you seen my little dog, poofy hair? Now, Boudot has a, a very mangy beard, a mustache to where you can't see his lips, mangy hair. He says, have you seen my dog? It's a big, bra black, fluffy dog. He's like, you would have a fluffy dog. I know I ain't seen your dog. And if you keep bothering me, no one's going to see you very long either. I mean, he doesn't have an accent. I just like that accent when I do his voice. Uh, so basically, he says, get out of here, tramp. No one wants to talk to you. Go do tramp things. And then... A couple minutes later, a lady walks by and she goes up to the cop and she says, have you seen my dog? He's worth $10,000. And he's like, $10,000? Let's find that dog. Throw a net over the city. We need a drag net. Get the, uh, get the National Guard. You know, it makes a big deal because it's a $10,000 dog. And then as she's going through the park, uh, people are helping her. A guy drives by in his car and says, do you need any help, ma'am? And uh, so basically this is a... Uh, talking about the different class systems. Uh, people who are poor are treated poorly. People who are rich are treated very well. Uh, in the next scene, we, are, we meet, uh, his name is Edward. He is a middle-class man who owns a bookstore. Uh, he's, he said he's middle-class, but he seems like he does pretty well for himself. Uh, he is in a room with his maid, who is named Chloe, uh, they are discussing, well, at first you don't know it's his maid because they are discussing like how much they like each other. Uh, and then you learn that he's actually having an affair with his wife. Uh, he, she claims that she's in love with him. He says he loves her too. And then when she exits the room, he makes a comment about how the night before when, uh, they tried to have intercourse, he fell asleep before they could do that. And how one day a younger man with more money is going to take her away from him. Um, after this, we are thrown into the next scene where the Chloe, uh, the maid, is in one of the rooms of this house, and she's looking through kind of like a telescope thing outside, and uh, Edward comes in, and he's like, what are you looking at that telescope for? You should be cleaning this piano. Dust the piano. And she's like, why do, we, why do you even have a piano? No one plays. He says, because it's a status symbol. Got to have a piano in your house. And then he takes over looking through the telescope. And as he's looking through the telescope, he sees this uh, bum. He sees Bordeaux walking down the street. And he says, wow, that is a magnificent specimen of a bum. I've never seen such a textbook bum in my life. And then Bordeaux ends up jumping in this lake. And he's like, good God, he's killed himself. And he runs down the stairs and runs out the door. And he jumps in the lake to save Bordeaux while everyone else is kind of looking on like it's a seat of an accident you know everyone wants to pull over on the freeway while you're just trying to get home from work it's all you want to do you don't want to sit in traffic you've had a long day you just want to get home and people are stopping to look at this accident and uh so they're just sitting there and um chloe runs out and she sees some people she's like don't you want to go in and help them and they're like ah oh, this happens he's a bum this happens all the time it's not a big deal so 
uh, Bordeaux rescues him from the lake, and everyone's like, you're a hero. Or sorry, not Bordeaux. Uh, Ed, Ed, Edward rescues Bordeaux from the lake, and everyone's like, you're a hero. God be praised, you saved him. And they get him in the house, and uh, he's revived. And uh, Ed, Ed, Edward, Edward is like, I saved you. Aren't you happy? And <laughs> Bordeaux's like, no, I want to kill myself. Why'd you save me? This is, you wasted your time and your energy. I could have been dead by now. Uh, so basically he's unhappy by the fact that he's not dead. Um, so the rest of the movie, I, I would say for like the next, uh, it's an hour and a half movie. I would say probably for the next 30 or 40 minutes, um, this man, Edward, is uh, offering his house to Bruno because he, he saved him. He feels like now his life is, uh, he, he has to, prove to Bordeaux that his life is worth saving. He also feels like he uh, is obligated in some way to help Bordeaux. So he's like, you know, giving him new clothes, letting him use his house, giving him great food, you know, give, basically bending over backwards for this guy. And Bordeaux just goes out of his way to just kind of destroy everything in the house. He puts down the food that they're eating. It's not good enough. Uh, it, there's scenes where it's almost like the... Uh, the director, Renault just said, you know what I want you to do? I want you to go in the kitchen and just, just throw things around and just make a huge mess. And then I want you to go into the living room and I want you to just go in there and make a huge mess. And then there's going to be this pivotal scene where you have to polish your shoes. And what I want you to do is go in the bedroom and just make a huge mess. And that's basically what... So after he's throwing stuff around in every room, uh, he eventually runs into Chloe again. And he says, Chloe, I want to kiss. And she says, oh, I don't really like men who have beards. Uh, but if you get a shave and a nice haircut, maybe we'll talk. So the maid, who basically has been totally disgusted by this man through the entire movie, um, and who is concerned that he is trying to take her away from her true love, uh, decides, you know, maybe, maybe I'll give you a kiss, but you're going to need to get a shave first. So he goes to the barbershop, he gets a shave, he gets uh, a haircut, and then he comes home and he finds uh, Emma all alone by herself in her bedroom. So he goes into the bedroom and he basically rapes Emma. Um, sure, why not? And then uh, she gets up and she has this huge smile on her face because I guess um, maybe uh, her husband hadn't treated her that way in a while. Uh, I don't know. She also seemed disgusted by Bordeaux, but as soon as he hits on her, makes a move for her, she's all about it. So he ends up sleeping with her. Then at the end of the movie, everyone's kind of fed up with Bordeaux, and uh, we see an actual scene where Emma finds Chloe and uh, Edmund together. So they're, she sees that he's cheating on her. And she says she wants answers. And he's like, oh, I'm not going to pretend here. We all know what's going on. And we all know what needs to happen now. And then Bordeaux, Bordeaux, who was given a lottery ticket earlier by Edmund, says, I've won the lottery. I won a big. And, and he did win the lottery. Uh, so then in the next scene, you see Bordeaux and uh, Chloe on a boat with Edmund and, um, uh, sorry, Ed, Edward and Emma, they're on a boat together, and uh, apparently Bordeaux and Chloe are now married. So um, they got married uh, for some reason, and then they're floating down the this uh, river, and he b bends over, he kind of leans over in the water to k pick up a flower for Chloe. Their boat tumps over. Uh, Chloe and Edmund and Emma all make it to shore. Uh, and then we see Bodo swimming. So he could have actually swam. He didn't have to be saved from drowning. Uh, but we see him swimming. And then he gets to the shore. He takes off all his rich clothes. He grabs a scarecrow, puts the scarecrow clothes on, and then kind of lays down in the middle of the field like he's going to do this all over again. So um, that's pretty much the movie in a nutshell. This movie has a lot of, obviously, it's talking about the class system. Um, I believe that Bodo uh, ended up doing all this because in the, in the beginning we see that the rich people are treated better than the poor people and then in the end he wanted to or his plan 
is to take advantage of a rich person, uh, take them for all they have, leave them, uh, you know, sad and, you know, basically with nothing, and then move on and do the same thing to someone else later on. Now, how did he know that a rich person was going to save him from drowning? I don't know. Um, maybe he's done it before and that's just the kind of person who does it. Uh, but that's the movie in a nutshell. What did I think of the movie? Well, um, you know, I understand what they're trying to say as far as the class system goes, how poor people are treated worse than rich people. He kind of wanted to stick it to the rich person in the end. Uh, so that makes sense. I understand kind of what they're going for there. Uh, what I don't understand is how this movie is funny. Now, I had the same problem with MASH, uh, where, you know, maybe it was funny back in the day, but I don't see a lot of humor in it today. Uh, the character of Bodo, Michael Simon, I'm assuming back then he was considered incredibly funny because he just goes into rooms and starts destroying things and crashing around pots and pans and acting like a basic little, a, a, a drunk through the whole movie. And maybe back then that was something that was funny, you know, a drunk person on stage or someone's pretending to be drunk in a movie and just the absolute chaos that they're causing uh, was funny at some time. I didn't find it funny. The only really funny parts I found was uh, in the beginning with the dog. I thought that was pretty funny. But nothing that uh, happens after that I really thought was funny at all. And then there's this rape scene that I also found was a little bizarre and uh, off-putting. And also the love story, which kind of came from nowhere. Uh, the fact that at the end, uh, Edmund's wife is like, so completely contempt with it, or not content, yeah, c completely okay with being with him, even though he's been cheating this whole time. It's like, everything is fine now because uh, she's with someone else, which I hate, I hate that line of thinking in a movie um, just because they want to wrap everything up in a nice little bow and make it uh, seem like, you know, it's a happy ending or something. They tend to... Uh, have the woman forget about all the atrocities that I've done to her. Uh, and I really don't understand at the end when uh, Chloe ends up marrying Bordeaux. My assumption is because of he came into a lot of money and he's young and that's kind of what she's chasing after uh, because that's what she was chasing after with uh, Edward, even though he was middle class. But she absolutely despises this man through the entire movie. Uh, he's a jerk to everyone. He's just this really bad human being. And for some reason, they still want him, or not they, Ed Ward still wants him in the house. Like he, he talks about how he should throw him out because he's causing this big ordeal and this big scene, but never actually does it. He just lets, uh, he just lets him, um, he, Bodo take advantage of everyone in his house and destroy his house. And it's just very weird that, uh, I mean, even if you save someone's life, uh, you should be able to just let them go and live the life that you've saved. So I don't understand the motives in this movie. I don't understand what's really driving these characters. Um, to me, it just seems like a bit idiotic that they're being driven by nothing. Uh, and then I really don't like Michael Simon in this movie. Uh, I, I don't find drunks funny. Um, I've grown up with enough, uh, around enough people who are drunk to know that, uh, you know, it's a disease, it's a cry for help. And maybe back then they didn't know that, but today I, I feel like we should treat it a whole lot different than we used to. And I, this movie doesn't hold up and I'm actually surprised, like I said with MASH, I'm actually surprised that it was ever popular to begin with uh, because the acting's not great. Um, Bordeaux, I'm assuming Bordeaux will be the one that's highly regarded in this movie as an actor, but he's not really good. He's just throwing stuff around. And even when he's throwing stuff around, like, I don't even think he's doing that well. Like, he, it's just like a little child in a room throwing stuff around. Uh, but I don't consider that good acting. Uh, so this movie really had nothing for me at all. Uh, I can So one thing I can appreciate, though, is that the camera work on this movie is really good uh, in terms that this movie aged at least camera-wise really well. Back in, uh, back in this time period, normally you would have a lot of imperfections in the film. Uh, even watching movies that came out later than this, uh, you see a lot of imperfections in the film. It'll make crackling noises. It'll have these like weird like lines and stuff every now and then. Uh, but this movie doesn't really do that. Uh, it holds up really well in that aspect, but that's really the only thing that ha it has going for it is that it, it looks like 
you're watching a movie, the quality that was maybe made 10 or 15 years later. Um, but that doesn't save it. It just makes it easier to watch. Uh, but it doesn't really save the movie. I'm not sure even Bordeaux was saved from drowning. I don't think he can be saved from a bad movie. Uh, so I'm going to give the, and it's crazy because once again, this is a hundred percent fresh rating. The audience rating is also pretty respectable, but I'm going to give it a five out of 10, which is easily the lowest that I've given so far. So thank you. I hope you all have a great day and I'll see you next time.